The movie opens in Free City, a massive multiplayer online role-playing video game city, where we are introduced to our protagonist, Guy. Every day, Guy follows the same routine. He wakes up, greets his goldfish, and gets dressed for work at a bank. Before leaving home, he has his breakfast while watching the news. After this, he goes to a coffee shop, where he orders the same drink that he always does, medium coffee with milk and sugar. On his way to work, he stops by a shoe store and admires a cool pair of sneakers, but he cannot afford them. Shortly after, he meets with his best friend, Buddy. With whom he talks about their perfect life, even when there's chaos around them. Guy considers himself to be the happiest man, as he has everything he needs except for one thing, his dream girl. If Ryan Reynolds cannot get a girl, I may as well strap myself to a rocket now. As usual, Guy is working in the bank when some armed robbers with sunglasses break in. Buddy, who is in charge of the bank's security, simply drops his weapon and lies down next to Guy. In the midst of the robbery, the two friends discuss Guy's dream girl. Buddy insists that such a girl doesn't exist, but Guy remains optimistic. Mystic. On the other side of Free City, we see a Molotov girl meeting with a masked man. The masked man hands her a map to the secret place with crucial information. During this exchange, the man inquires about her plans, but she holds him at gunpoint and warns him not to question her again. As she walks away with the map, he questions her again, and this prompts her to shoot him down without any hesitation. Following this, she walks down the street and passes Guy, who can't take his gaze off of her. Upon realizing that she's his dream girl, he decides to approach her, but he's unfortunately run over. By a train. The scene then cuts to the real world, introducing us to a young girl, Millie. She's currently in a coffee shop where she backs up her Free City game, disconnects from it, and sees an advertisement for Free City 2. Just then, a barista approaches her and asks her to leave because the coffee shop is about to close. She also notices her playing Free City and wonders why everyone is so obsessed with it. Millie responds that she's suing the game publisher and that she's playing it just to gather evidence. On another day in Free City, Guy wakes up and repeats his daily routine, but this time he tries ordering a cappuccino and instead of his regular coffee, surprising everyone around him. Feeling self-conscious, he pretends to be joking and takes the regular coffee before leaving. Later at the bank, the robbers break in, as usual, and everyone lies down on the ground, as usual. During this, Guy notices the Molotov girl, but Buddy reminds him that they can't talk to people with sunglasses. Thinking of a solution, he approaches one of the armed men and asks for his sunglasses, only to get beaten. However, Guy fights back and takes the glasses after accidentally shooting the robber. As soon as he puts them on, he sees the city in a completely different manner, with virtual signs all around him. He soon spots a med kit nearby, and upon touching it, his wound heals instantly, prompting him to feel energized. He then wanders around the city until he encounters an accident. A boy with a jetpack falls from the sky and dies, after which some virtual money floats above his body. Guy touches it, and to his surprise, the money gets transferred into his account. With this money, he finally purchases his dream sneakers. In the real world, we see Tsunami Studios, the company that created the free city game. There, a game developer named Keys shows his co-worker Mauser how Guy, an NPC, eliminated a player in the game. Mauser then tells him to boot the NPC out, but it doesn't seem to be possible. As a result, they decide to enter the game to investigate the character. The two approach Guy, one dressed as a cop and the other as a bunny. They accuse him of hacking the game and demand that he change his skin. Guy is perplexed, but they believe that he's acting dumb, so they begin firing at him, causing him to run. They track him down into an under-construction building. While escaping, Guy learns of a new feature of his sneakers that allow him to jump several meters high. To reach him, Mauser customizes the building. Soon after, Guy reaches the roof, but there are no jumping features left on his sneakers. Thus, he's forced to jump towards a wrecking ball. Unfortunately, he misses it and falls. Moments before hitting the ground, his sunglasses quickly activate a bubble suit, preventing him from any harm. Guy then rejoices in the fact that he's still alive, but Keys and Mauser crash into him at the same time. Afterwards, Keys claims that the number of online players didn't decrease, despite Guy's elimination. However, Mauser believes it to be a glitch and asks Keyes not to tell the CEO, Antoine. Years ago, Keyes and Millie appeared to have created an online game called Life Itself that was supposed to grow along with the players. Millie developed its AI, while Keyes wrote its code. At present, Keyes returns home only to discover Millie in his place. She's there to seek his help in suing Antoine, who stole their game. She requests his assistance in locating the evidence that is inside the game. However, Keyes isn't ready for this because he believes his boss is innocent and doesn't want to jeopardize his job for nothing. When Guy wakes up the following morning, he promises his goldfish that today will be different. 
That evening, Millie uses her avatar, Molotov Girl, and infiltrates the secret place where the evidence is hidden. Suddenly, Guy approaches behind, causing the guards to detect them and open fire. In a desperate bid to save herself, she uses her portal gun and teleports to another location, followed by Guy. After this, the two proceed to her hideout, where he's astounded to see her fine collection of weapons and motorcycles and butt cheeks. Believing that he's a newbie, she advises him to level up by robbing stores and shooting people. However, Guy asserts that he's unwilling to harm innocents. Hearing this, she tells him to be a good guy and reach level 100 before coming back to her. From then on, Guy decides to save NPCs from the villains who are the real players. After several failed attempts, he begins to succeed in his mission and eventually becomes a media sensation. People are now curious to find out who the actual player is behind the avatar. Amidst this, he also reaches level 102. One day, Guy goes to work to meet Buddy to ask where he's been all this time. In response, Guy explains everything that has happened to him in the last few days. While they're conversing, the robber arrives as usual. Everyone lies down on the floor except for Guy, who steals the robber's gun and then takes his glasses. He tries to convince Buddy to wear them, but the latter appears to be happy as he is. Meanwhile, at the Tsunami office, Keys receives several messages from Millie requesting his assistance. Thus, he reluctantly complies and helps her in entering the secret place containing evidence. Once inside, the Molotov girl retrieves the video evidence, but the alarm goes off. Seconds later, several armed guards appear and start shooting at her. She quickly takes cover behind a car, but drops the evidence in the process. In this intense moment, Guy comes to her rescue on a motorcycle. Keys is shocked to hear Millie talking to someone else, as he sees no other players besides her. After taking down some NPCs, Guy gets on the motorcycle, and the Molotov girl jumps on. They then dramatically flee through the window pane. It was at this moment while watching the movie that I had the strange, invasive thought that Ryan Reynolds doesn't have a penis in this world. Just then, Antoine arrives at Tsunami and directs his employees to upgrade Guy's character for the Free Guy sequel. He claims that by capitalizing on Guy's popularity, they can attract more users to the game. Back in the gaming world, Guy takes the Molotov girl to his personal showroom to show his impressive collection. Seeing this, she wonders how he leveled up so fast, but Guy appears perplexed by her questions. He then takes her out for ice cream and orders a bubblegum flavor, which happens to be her favorite. After a while of talking, she learns that they have several tastes in common. As they walk together, Guy expresses his wish to kiss her. Although she's initially surprised, she allows him to do so. In reality, Millie also begins liking him, even if she's unaware of his true identity. That's fine. Gamers get boners for lines of code all the time. See Baldur's Gate 3. The same evening, Keys finds Guy's code and rushes to Millie's place. Once there, he informs her that she was right all along. Antoine stole the code they created for life itself and implanted it in Free City. He also reveals that Guy is the NPC who evolved from their AI and coding. Hearing this, she's upset, as the first decent guy she fell in love with is an NPC. Furthermore, Keyes realizes that the elements of Free City 2 are all new, leading him to believe that Free City 2 isn't a sequel, but a replacement for Free City 1. Once it's released, the entirety of Free City 1 will be permanently deleted, including their evidence. To prevent this, he devises a plan with Guy's assistance to locate the original build for life itself within Free City. Later, while Molotov Girl meets Guy again, she discloses the truth. Free City is a simulation, and Guy is merely an AI construct. She also warns him that this gaming world is about to be a Raced, but he's unable to digest all of this at once. Depressed, Guy walks to the beach and throws a stone into the ocean, but it soon disappears. This makes him realize that even the ocean isn't real in this world, or maybe the stone just sunk. In desperation, he runs down the street screaming that everything is a hoax, but he's soon hit by two cars. Upon recovering from the accident, Guy visits Buddy and asks what he would do if he knew everything was fake. Buddy responds that he wouldn't mind because even if he isn't real, the moment that they're having is. Jesus, that's deep, Buddy. After listening to him, Guy feels motivated, so he asks Buddy to assist him in breaking into the secret place as he wants to help Molotov Girl with the video evidence. The two then go to the secret place and threaten a worker named Revengeman, demanding the evidence file. Revengeman turns out to be Guy's fan, and as a result, he's ready to give him whatever he wants. Guy then obtains the video evidence and hands it over to Molotov Girl. On the internet, Guy's popularity continues to grow, and people seem to be more interested in following him than in attending the game. This leads the pre-sales of Free City 2 to drop significantly. Infuriated, Antoine instructs his employees to remove Guy from the game, but Keyes reveals that he's the first self-aware NPC and can't be deleted. When the CEO keeps on nagging, Mauser reboots the game to restore Guy to his original programming. In the meantime, Guy and Molotov Girl are seen watching the video clip, only to discover the design of life itself. Guy recognizes the location, but before he can reveal anything, Mauser reboots the game. Sometime later, Free City comes back online, and Guy wakes up to carry out his old 
usual daily routine. As he walks through the streets, he's approached by Molotov Girl, who inquires about the location. However, he no longer recognizes her and walks away. This devastates Millie, and she gives up on her mission. But later, Keys calls Millie to inform her that despite the reboot, Guy's AI won't be erased. Excited, she immediately returns to the game, this time breaking into the bank to capture Guy. She brings him to an alley and tells him to put on the sunglasses, while also revealing that the entirety of Free City is about to be erased. When he still remains skeptical, she kisses him, and it's a pretty hot and heavy kiss too, making him recall everything. After this, he takes her to his apartment and shows her the reflections of life itself on the blinds. This makes her realize that Antoine has hidden life itself beyond the horizon, but has forgot to scrub the reflections. Now that they've got to get past the horizon, Millie seeks Keys' help. In the interim, Guy gathers all the NPCs and encourages them to act differently than usual. He persuades them to abandon their scripted roles and assume control over their lives. Despite their initial apprehension, they eventually agree. In the aftermath, all the NPCs disappear from Free City, leaving the players perplexed. At Tsunami, Antoine learns that Millie is working with Guy, so he orders Mauser to eliminate their characters and cancel their revival. Mauser then begins destroying the city to eliminate the couple, who are currently driving through the Free City. When the buildings are about to crush them, Keys secretly converts the road into a ramp, helping them flee the scene. Seeing this, Antoine instructs his team to release a new character, Dude. Following this, he confronts Keys and berates him for helping Millie. He also threatens to fire him, but Keys appears unconcerned. He presses a button in front of Antoine, activating an ocean bridge that leads beyond the horizon. The duo are about to cross the bridge, but suddenly, Molotov Girl starts glitching. Before fading away, she encourages him to continue on their mission. Later, while being escorted out of the tsunami office, Keys secretly begins streaming the game for all the fans to see. As Guy proceeds to cross the bridge, he's suddenly attacked by Dude. Guy gets beaten up until Buddy arrives to his rescue. However, Dude easily overpowers him as well. The big man then charges towards Guy to deliver a final blow, a special move called Sleep Paralysis Demon because that's what he is. But the latter quickly activates a Captain America shield and defends himself with the power of IP. In retaliation, he punches Dude away with Hulk's arm. He then activates a lightsaber and starts fighting the enemy. But at one point, Dude gains the upper hand and attempts to burst his ribs. At this crucial moment, Buddy throws the glasses to his friend and Guy puts them on Dude. This makes the latter see virtual objects in the surroundings, causing him to become distracted. The two friends then run towards their destination, while Antoine enters the server room to destroy the game's data. As he starts wrecking the servers, the entire free city, as well as the NPCs, including Buddy, begin to glitch out. Fortunately, Guy makes it through the barrier and lands on life itself, finally proving that Antoine stole the game. On the other hand, Antoine is on the verge of destroying the last server. When Millie intervenes, she then proposes a deal to hand over the remaining data of Free City, and in exchange, he can keep all of the code and the company's profits. The greedy Antoine accepts the deal, but his happiness doesn't last long. His company goes bankrupt after the whole scandal, causing him to get arrested as well. The scene then fast forwards to a few days later, showing Keys and Millie who have created their own new game called Free Life, and now Mauser is working with them. One day, Mauser, who is aware of Keys' feelings for Millie, suggests that he confess them. Accepting the suggestion, Keys invites her for coffee, but she's too busy with her game. She then logs into the game where the NPCs are now living a free life. She also meets Guy and tries to explain to him that she can't be with him forever. Surprisingly, Guy supports her decision and also admits that he was programmed to fall in love with with her. Someone wrote his code as a love letter to her, making Millie realize that it's Keys that loves her. In the final scene, she runs towards Keys in the coffee shop, marking the beginning for their romantic relationship. If only we could all have Ryan Reynolds as a proxy for ourselves and an ultimate wingman. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.